Hello everyone, this is Christy and today I'm going to show you a little trick how to create a 3D looking image of a screenshot of your website or any other image that you can use in your project to show as if it was a 3D perspective image. Let me show you what we're going to accomplish. I've created a demo page here on my site and as you can see the image on the right side here is a screenshot of my website and it appears to be in perspective with a bit of a shadow behind it you know and it's also transparent so you can see the background through it so if you want to create a website with a portfolio where you can showcase your uh, other websites or uh, you know just any other photos or images that you may want to kind of give this 3d effect you can accomplish this in Photoshop in very simple steps so let me show you how I've done it first of all I have gone to my website and taken a full screenshot of this website so for this you can use a free extension there are various extensions all over the internet that you can install and the one I used is called full page screen capture you can find this in your uh, in the Chrome Web Store so you just have to go to the web page you need to capture and click on the icon and it's gonna take a few seconds to scroll through and take a capture of your page and then patch it all together so as you can see I've taken a screenshot of my entire home page now I'm gonna have to save this as an image onto a folder on my hard drive and now I want to put this into Photoshop and perform this effect that I told you about so I'm gonna go into Photoshop and I'm gonna create a new document and this is depending on the size you need to have this at um, you can do a different size but I've, I've started with a 2000 by 2000 document pixels and at 72 pixels per inch so 72 dpi RGB color and let's make the background white so that we can see what we are doing click create and we have this blank document here I'm gonna just pull up the layers gallery I can press F7 to see my background here and now I'm gonna open my screen capture image and I'm gonna just select all control a select all and copy and then go to the new document and paste this will paste my website on top of the white background it creates a new layer so as you can see it's not cropped I can I can have the the whole image here so before I do this because I want to do a few tests and you know kind of resize it and distort it and I don't want to destroy my 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 image so I'm gonna have to convert it to a smart object which will allow me to resize it and do all the stuff with it without actually losing any quality from my image so the first thing I do is just right click on the layer and say convert to smart object okay and now I can resize this non-destructively and I can still know that I can keep my original image in, in there. So now the first thing I need to do is because this is quite large. If I zoom out, you can see it's quite large. Uh, the first thing I press Control T to transform, transform and just make it uh, fit within my, my document here. I can zoom back in Control plus Control minus and here we go it fits in my document here now because of the, the background of my um, website is white I'm gonna actually click on the background of my document and select some other color maybe something green I don't want I don't it doesn't matter and just use the fill tool to change that because I want to see the boundaries I want to see the edges and um, I want to see what I'm doing with my image now when I export this it's not going to be background green because I, I will turn it off but just to, to help us resize it so the, the only thing you need to do now is just to resize this image transform it with the perspective so first of all we can just click uh, press Control T to transform sorry forget to uh, remember to select the layer with the website and Control T to transform you can see the transform controls and normally this will allow you to scale it horizontally vertically and so on but actually what I want to do is right click and say perspective this will allow me to create a perspective distort so now let's try and pull from the top, top left uh, you know you can see how it's it's resizing it top left 
uh, corner just pull down to create this this effect just pull down don't pull right because if you pull right it's going to do it like this you know it's going to it's going to create a different perspective there so i'm just going to pull down and have the vanishing point to the left there um, don't overdo it depending on how um visible this effect you want to be you can pull way more more or less you know if i pull too much this is obviously too much it it, it's, it looks very artificial very fake and distorted so we don't want to do too much of this but a bit of it is acceptable so let's just do like that you know just just do like this if you are not a uh, happy with this you can switch to transform to also scale it so if if you just leave the perspective transform on and i i i click on this you know you can change the skew so i can have the base the base kind of different on the bottom there different angle and the top is going to be more um, accented or I can right click and change back to the transform scale. This is not going to lose my perspective, but I can now pull from the right um, and you, you notice how the perspective changes and slightly, uh, slightly turns to the right a bit. It, it does become smaller, which is not a problem. We can we can scale it later from the corner. So I think I think I'm quite happy with it like that, just slightly leaning towards the back and at an angle and I can now just pull the corner to make it larger okay and if I'm happy when I'm happy with my transform uh, click uh, press enter to apply the transformation let me do it again so you can see it so undo I'm gonna undo start again from the um, from the straight image control T to transform right click to say perspective pull from the top left corner uh, or if you want the effect to be uh, in the other direction you can pull from the top right corner so you can see it does it on the other edge okay but i i will do the top left corner just i just want to use that one so here we go pull it down not too much don't overdo it and then you can change the skew a bit to have the baseline straight and then right click change the scale and move the right edge to the left to give it a bit of a slant like that so when you're happy with this scale it back up a bit from the corners to keep the ratio and when you're happy just press enter now we have created our perspective effect uh, it looks quite cool, but now we want to give it a 3d kind of depth So we want to also add a shadow behind this. Okay, so the in order to do that I can just on on my layer layer one here, which is the the website image I can go down there and click on effects FX and use drop shadow the drop shadow puts a shadow behind it. You can see it already I think and with the controls you can change the opacity you can, you can make it darker or lighter and also you can change the distance but the first option you want to change is the angle because the angle by default is 90 degrees which means the shadow is kind of um, from the top to the bottom we want the shadow to be towards the right because um, that's where you know all our image goes so I'm just gonna pull move this this angle move this angle to the sort of 130 degrees you can do this also by pulling clicking on the shadow here with your mouse and moving the shadow around as far as you like and when you when you like the position this this alters the distance and also the angle so um, as you can see here I'm gonna pull it a bit back but not too much again you don't want to overdo these effects because then they look kind of fake so I'm just gonna pull the shadow here and I'm gonna make the opacity slightly lighter so that it doesn't it doesn't look overdone and the spread here changes the if you want the fluffiness um, the the how how, how um, far out the fluffy bit of the shadow starts the the, the blurry part so um, if you if you make it 
let's put that to the minimum zero and then the size actually makes the fluffy the um, fluffy that's a funny name um, the the fuzziness the blurriness of the shadow this this is the size that controls it so I'm just gonna leave it at about maybe maybe 65 and just adjust the angle a bit look to the back okay so I think I think I'm quite happy with this now um, you know just experiment and play with it when you're happy click OK here so I have the shadow <clears throat> now all this is done and I want to export this and save it so that I can load it onto my website if I want to load it into another Photoshop document I don't really need to export it because I can just keep it as a PSD file but if I want to export it for the internet so I can put it on my on my website I need to export it as a PNG um, PNG allows you to export an image with alpha with transparency because we want to remove this background I'm just going to delete this background so now you can see the checkered background of no background in Photoshop so I want to export this and also I don't want to export all of this area on the left here that is empty so I'm just going to crop that I'm just going to click the select tool and select from like the outside and on the left on the left edge I'm just going to select all of this area all the way to the right side to the far right and click image and crop this will remove the area around my selection now notice i did not select close to the side because i have a blurry shadow there and i want to keep that as part of the, my image and when it's on a different background you'll notice the shadow there and the alpha cha channel allows you to put you know see through um, this image so i need to make sure i'm not chopping off the end of my shadow depending on how large it is I, I don't want to cut it off because then it looks cut off or fake you know when the shadow stops so I just want to keep safe margins around my image and no background I've deleted my background and now the final step I need to export this as a PNG now I go to file and export and don't do quick export you know just go to save for web legacy this allows us to set some options probably by default your uh, export may have jpeg here so we want to make sure that we select png 24 24 bit with transparency so turn on transparency if i turn it off you can see that the background becomes white and if you just care about a white background if you want to use this image on a white background you can export it as a JPEG with a white background and that's fine but if you want to use the image on various uh, various backgrounds uh, different colors or you know you may want to have something else in the background then you have to make it transparency with transparency so PNG 24 click on transparency that will remove the background still keep our shadow and here at the bottom you want to set the image size again you need to make sure that you decide what image size you want to export depending on where you're using this image and what you want to do with it and at the moment it's 2000 pixels high because that's how we created our document initially but I don't know if I want to use it on a web page like I've done here for example this is my example page and I've used it here um, I don't need to have 2000 pixels here this is too much so I probably want something like 600 700 pixels so that will reduce the size if you look on the bottom left here PNG 24 this this image currently will be 712 kilobytes I have another video on how to optimize images for the web but in this particular case it helps to have the size as small as possible to keep the file size as small as possible and therefore loading time uh, as as low as possible too so I'm just gonna put the height here 600 for now I don't want to export larger than this it looks a bit small here because my screen is quite high resolution but as you can look you, you can see down here the image size has fallen down to 113 kilobytes I think considering the ma the the shadow and all of this uh, area that we have in my image here I think that's a good size 113 kilobytes so I'm gonna leave it at that 392 by 600 
transparency with PNG24 and I'm going to save that and I'm going to save it to my um, hard drive 3D image and now I'm going to go and load it onto my site and put it on the page right there. Okay, as you can see, my image is now on my page. I have uh, replaced that demo one. And you can see that although my image, my site has a green background, I can see the background behind my image here. That allows me to go back and change my mind, change the color of my background, and that, that will not affect my image. I can still see my image showing up here on whatever background I put it because of the alpha uh, channel. So. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you liked what you see and to get more videos in the future about Photoshop, design, web design and uh, lots of other topics. Thanks for watching.